Lund, just a guy trying to help out the monarchs. And look what came in the mail that's going to help me help the monarchs. This is my tagging kit. This is my first year getting into the tagging, and I've wanted to make this video for a long time, and now I get to. Today's August 23rd. This actually came in the mail August 21st. And that's a good thing, because really the effort to tag the monarchs, we want to do it to study the migration. And it's right around now that up here in Michigan, the monarchs are going to start migrating south to Mexico. Now, let me be honest also, uh, this really is more of a thing for those of us east of the Rockies. If you're west of the Rockies or in other areas, you're not really part of this monarch migration, so sorry. But... There's a lot of citizen science that needs to be done in order to learn a lot more about the migration and the migratory paths and exactly where does it start? Where do they come from? What paths do they follow? We know a lot of those paths pretty well, but there's also a lot that we don't know yet. And the more data they have, the better. So really, this is a way for a citizen like you or me to get involved and contribute to the scientific community, giving them some good hardcore data. Now, if you've never really looked into it, uh, doing a simple Google search, Monarch Migratory Path or Monarch Migration, Google Images will give you plenty of maps that are out there that show a lot of our known migratory paths. Some of them even include differentiating between which ones are well-known and which ones are just possible ones that they're trying to study more. So I think it's a pretty cool thing to get into. And if you're rearing monarchs, whether it just be like one or two, or you're doing higher numbers than that, you can provide some really good data. Also, you can tag wild-caught monarchs. It doesn't just have to be ones that you've raised. So if you're out in the field and you got a net, you can catch a wild monarch and tag that as well. Before we get into it, let me just mention monarchwatch.org. That's where I've gotten these tags from. And this is not product endorsement as far as YouTube's concerned. This is a nonprofit organization. This is just the best place to contribute your data. They sell these kits for a very reasonable cost. You can order them in little sticker batches of 25. And that cost really just goes to making the tags, getting the information sent out. Some of the money also funds uh, people who go out and in Mexico, when a lot of these monarchs end up dying, they go out and they collect them and they get paid to do that too. Uh, sometimes also I've heard that fund dries up. So if you ever want to contribute to monarchwatch.org, really the cost of these kits doesn't cover always the cost of collecting the monarchs and getting the data. So you can help out that way too. All right, so I just opened it. Let's show you what's inside and how this works. So inside, got a nice little bookmark here. That's what a tag is going to look like when placed on the monarch's wing. And we'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Uh, you get a nice newsletter that talks about this year's migration and how things are looking. Got some nice sex determination factoids there as far as how to tell males from females because that's part of the data that you also provide, which sex your monarch is. And you get this data sheet. Now, also, they've mentioned pretty clearly in multiple places in this information, they prefer that you download the electronic version, fill it out as a spreadsheet, and email it back to them. But this is also just the old school way of doing it. No matter what the case may be, whether you're doing it with the hard copy paper or you're doing it with a spreadsheet that you should save your data to, just in case they lose yours, they might need to contact you if they find one of your monarchs, so that way they can get the data. For each tag that you use, you're going to write down what the tag number is, it's three letters and three numbers, the date of release, whether it was male or female, and then whether or not you raised this, you reared it, or whether you, this was one that you caught in the wild. And then, where did this happen at? Where did you tag it? City, state, or Providence. And then your zip code. Because, yep, definitely uh, Canadians can be doing this as well. Anybody east of the Rockies. And then, here are the actual tags. Little tiny stickers. Uh, I got a, two sheets, because again, I ordered 50. 25 on each sheet. And you can see that we've got my codes right down here. Looks like all of mine are X, N, J, and then a number, three-digit number. So that's going to go on the butterfly. If and when somebody finds one of my butterflies with this tag on there, there's a good chance that they don't even know that this program exists. Hopefully, though, if they do find it, then they can email to the email address on there, or they can go to the website that's there in red, or they also have an 888 number there, 1888 tagging, and report the other end of the data that they found this monarch at that location. 
Cool. So the idea is, with these stickers, you're going to attach them to the outside wing of the Monarch. MonarchWatch.org provides you with a nice little instructional sheet on how to do it. I thought also I'd make a video to show you how I'm going to do it. And keep in mind, this is my first time doing it. But we'll see how it goes. And it's around this time period too, late August, when anything that's emerging, there's a very good chance that you have a fourth generation Monarch. These are the ones that are going to migrate down to Mexico and spend the winter there. I'm not sure how much you know about the different Monarch generations, but east of the Rockies here we experience four generations. First generation is really the eggs that are laid by the previous year's fourth generation. When they are done spending their time in the winter forests of Mexico, they come up, they mate, and they lay eggs on the milkweed in northern Mexico and in the southern United States. Those eggs are first generation. First generation lives approximately six weeks. Those eggs down there in the very south of the U.S., they hatch, and that's your first generation. They continue to migrate up. In the middle latitudes of the U.S., that's where they're going to mate and lay their second generation eggs, which also, those monarchs are only going to live for six weeks as well. They hatch, and second generation comes up, and for Michigan, reaches maybe parts of Michigan and lays some of what it will then be third generation eggs. The overwhelming majority of monarchs you've seen in my videos have probably been third generation monarchs. They too live only for six weeks. Third generation monarchs that are out flying around right now in August, they are laying eggs that are going to be fourth generation monarchs. But also some of the ones that emerge from a chrysalis right now, those have a good chance of being fourth generation. There's a little bit of overlap for each generation. It's not like when two monarchs get together, they talk to each other and be like, hey, which generation are you? So you, you do have some overlap there as far as the generations go. But the tags, they get sent out here in late August because there's a higher probability from this point on that the monarchs that are emerging as adults right now are going to be fourth generation. Here in late August, you got a good chance, and as we go from August into September, once you're in September, it's almost a guarantee these are going to be fourth generation monarchs that emerge. There's also a good infographic that really breaks down these different generations and the time periods that you can find them. But of course, you got to also understand, it depends upon which latitudes you are at as far as where in the monarch migratory cycle you're, you're experiencing them. And I ordered my monarch tagging kit uh, before August 1st, back in July, second or third week in July, and they only start shipping them August 1st, and it takes about 7 to 10 days to process it and get it out to you. And they do that intentionally because they want most of these tags to really be insured upon 4th generation monarchs. If you ever find one of these monarchs with a tag on it, be sure to contribute to the data. So for all the monarchs that I end up tagging, I'm one end of that data. The other end of that data then would be whoever finds it. And a lot of times you got to understand the person who finds the monarch might not even know that the monarch's in trouble, might not even know that we're trying to study the migratory path, might not have any idea what that sticker means. That's why the information's on the sticker. Hopefully they get curious enough to try to email or call or check out the website and find out more about it. But I always think it's cool to be able to find ways to do some citizen science, just as your average person being able to contribute to the scientific community and get them some very valuable data. All right, so I just had uh, a monarch come out. We're going to show you, once her wings dry, how to tag her. Actually, I haven't checked if it's a him or her yet, but we'll see. But I'll give you some tips on how to hold the butterfly to prevent damaging the butterfly, which, of course, is always a concern when doing something like this, and how to secure that sticker on there according to the instructions that monarchwatch.org has given me. Let's do it. Actually, that's a male. You can see the dimple right there. On the other side of the wing, that's the scent gland. That's what lets you know it's a male. We'll show more of that when we go to tag it. Okay, so first things first, your tags have a numbered sequential order, so they want you to tag in that numerical order. So I'm going to start with XNJ100. Now I'm going to download the uh, electronic sheet and do it that way, but in the meantime I'm going to paper record what all my tags are. And so I've already filled out the first tag I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to make my ones like that so it's easy for them to read. They do ask that you use black ink when filling this out, so it's all legible. And I like to cross my sevens as well, just to make sure it's all clear. We're releasing a male, and it was reared. And my address will eventually go there. This guy does look ready. When they're climbing around like this, I know that they're ready to go. You should wait 
four hours or so for the wings to be fully dry since emerging from the chrysalis. And it's been a good four hours for him. So he's ready. Now the tagging sticker gets applied in one of these cells. These orange areas that are bordered by the black lines, those are called cells. And the one that my, the one that's right there at the tip of my pinky, that's called the discal cell. So it's the one that's central. And that's going to be the cell then where the sticker goes. It can go on the left or it can go on the right. Now also you can see those two little black scent pouches. That's how I know that this is a male. And if you need further instruction on that, those two scent pouches, we really described those pretty well in part five of the Raising Monarch series. So we've got a boy here. Now if I may, what I would further recommend, they have these do not use stickers up here at the top. Those are for printing purposes to make sure that the ink is working. You don't want to use those, of course, but I'm going to use it to just practice. What's it going to be like to take one of these stickers off? You don't want to get any of your finger oils on the adhesive because that could interfere with how well it sticks on to the wing. You see, these aren't going to be that easy. Okay, starting to come. As I peel it off, I'm going to try to just only touch the very edges of it. Yeah. That wasn't actually too bad. You can see, though, why a lot of people like to have kids help with this because, uh, Kids have smaller fingers than my big clumsy ones. Now that I've practiced, I'm going to carefully remove just at the edge. Double check, make sure it's the right one. Yep. XNJ100. I'm going to remove just at the edge this tag. They did give the advice that using a toothpick to get it started could be helpful. I like to just kind of bend the paper rather than peel the sticker. Okay, there is my tag. Now just with it there on my finger, that's how I'm going to hold it. Hopefully there's no wind, but if you need to take it into an indoor place to do this where there's no wind, that would help too. And it's okay if you put the sticker on upside down, that's not going to really matter. So don't worry about it being right side up. Don't fret over that. Now ideally, when you grasp the Monarch, and I've shown this in other videos before, you want to go right where the wings connect to the thorax, that's the middle part of the body. If you're holding there, this is where I hold them to test them for OE, then they're unable to flap the wings, and so that makes it less likely to harm the butterfly. So let me just show that again. Whether you're getting the butterfly from a net, or in my case a screen, I'm just going to touch him right there, and then I've got him. So when the wings are closed, don't try to do it when it's flapping its wings, but once it's got them together and they're dorsal, then just touch right there, and you don't even have to squeeze. You're just holding right there and just gently applying some pressure, and you've got the monarch. This is how I'm going to hold it when I tag the monarch. So now that we've got the sticker in one hand, and we've got the monarch in the other, we're ready to tag. But definitely it could be useful to have two people doing this. One to hold and one to actually apply the sticker. Okay, so here we have our Monarch. And here is the discal cell. Here's my first time trying this. Place it right there. It went on pretty well. Now, with both fingers on both sides, I'm going to touch very gently and apply a little bit of pressure just a little bit. Don't want to damage the wing. Now the instructions say press firmly for several seconds. I don't know how firmly is firm. I'm just going to press until I can feel pressure on both sides. I don't want to harm the monarch. And that should be it. Our tag is on. And this one is ready for release. By the way, I already tested it for OE for those curious. He was clean. In fact, just because I like data, I think on my cards I'm also going to be showing whether or not they were tagged and what the tag number is. I don't know why, just because data's cool. What better place to release than my milkweed, right? So, 
I don't know if he's going to fly away as soon as I let him go or if he's going to hang out with us for a little bit, but we'll just place him right there. All right, he's sticking around for a second. Well, I do believe that might just be the thumbnail for the video. What do you think? I think I'm going to name you Corbin. Corbin Dallas. Fifth Element. Great movie. While Corbin's still hanging out with us, uh, maybe now's a good time to mention, monarchwatch.org, uh, they really made sure to um, include in their information how very important it is to make sure that you, you do submit to them your data. They've had multiple times where people have filled out their data, they've done the tagging, but then when they're done and the season's over, they don't ever turn in their data. You know, life happens and they just get sidetracked. And if your season's over, you're maybe not thinking about the Monarchs as much. But please make sure that you do send in that data. Once your season's done, once you know you're not using any more tags, you've used whatever you can for the season, get that data into them. Please do it. It helps out so much. See you, Corbin. Now, hopefully it goes without saying, if you're watching this video the year it comes out, 2017, then it's a little too late for you to order your tagging kit and to do this. But hopefully this does help you plan for upcoming seasons if you want to be a part of this awesome citizen science effort. Data is so valuable. And if you're watching this video some other time than 2017, well, then you can order your kit anytime in the summer prior to August, and monarchwatch.org will have you on the list, and they'll send out your kit in time for you to be able to tag your fourth-generation monarchs. So hey, if you feel so inclined... Why not contribute some citizen science in the monarch rearing project that you're already doing? It's a cool way to help out scientists. I'm Rich Lund. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for helping me help out the monarchs. See you next time.